Hi guys and welcome back to Crafty Equipment Designs. I hope you're well and you're having a really great day. So for those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen and um, I make quilts and anything else that I fancy to be honest. <laughs> so this week uh, we are on row two to join in our star sample quilt along and um, it's completed so um, we are going to learn how to do that today um, there is one mistake that I actually made on the screen um, but I will put it on the screen so that you know um, when that is being done so um, I think I said it was because you need to make a or to cut fabric for your border for the center block and I think I mentioned that it was six inches in width but I think it needs to be six and three quarters so um, I will remind you um, on the screen and put it up flashing so that you can can see it um, I mean there isn't a, a major problem really if you did manage to do the six inches because what I did then was added just a border a black strip of fabric to make up the length of it uh, which is not really a big issue but um, I will put it on there okay um, just as I remember because when I did I was like what did I do wrong <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like oh no it's not supposed to be six inches in width it's six and three quarters so um, yeah it is what it is but one thing about quilting or sewing you know as long as you understand the math you can you can make up the fabric and um, shortcuts so to speak um, so yeah so that was simply really so it's, it's, it's my problem which I've corrected so it won't be your problem and I didn't see the point in redoing the whole video because by this time I'd already explained, stitch it together. I would have had to um, literally take it apart and redo it and cut the fabric yet again. And so I didn't want to do that. So th that's why I thought let me mention it to you here now so that you won't make the same error. Okay, but as I said, I will put that reminder on the screen so that you are notified of it when I actually mention the size that you actually need for the border. Um, so with that being said, obviously it's joining the rows today. Um, it's real simple, guys. If you do have any problems or you need to ask me any questions, by all means, just hook me up down below there. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think of making your quilt as you go with my new technique. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So with that being said, guys, welcome for those of you who are new and my favorite fab. Thank you so much for returning and watching my tutorials. So love you lots. See you next week for the last one where we will complete the whole quilt, including the borders. Well, that makes it completed, isn't it? <laughs> and um, yeah, we will see well, how beautiful it actually looks. So I hope yours is coming along really well. Please don't forget um, while you're watching this particular tutorials for making the quilt along that it'll be very nice if you can watch through the advertisement just to help me uh, with commission etc so that I can be able to make more fantastic videos like this one okay so with that being said guys love you lots see you next week and um, bye for now and as I usually say happy quilting guys love you lots bye all right guys so we're gonna get started so you need two strips of um, border fabric for the center block. Now the border fabrics measure six inches in width by the, the width or the length of your um, center block. Okay, so I've already added on one here. So we need two of those. All right, so I'm just going to sew the other one down. So again, ensure that the center block is nice and iron because obviously we've made it for some time now and we'll get a little bit of crimple on it. So iron all the blocks and get them ready. So all you need to do literally is just center that onto there and sew it front sides together. All right, so once you've done that, you have two options. You can finger press or you can just simply fold it back and use the iron. It's totally down to you. I'm just going to finger press at this particular stage. All right, now what you need to ensure is that you use a quarter inch seam to join the border around the block. 
all right so and you should not really cut off your point you should have that space between there to ensure that you have leverage really so that your point doesn't get cut off all right now the next stage now is to simply measure the length of this so you're going to measure the whole length of whatever yours is and you're going to do the same thing you're then going to cut a six inch width um, border fabric and sew it on so basically we're bordering the center block with the six inch strips I'm going to do that now then I'll come back and show you the next stages all right while I am away doing that what I would like you to do is to get your strips again ready for adding on to the blocks and again it's the same size so one and a half by twelve and a half okay and you need eight of these for this one you also need to get your blocks ready and ironed, steamed down nice and smooth. And I'm going to share with you the blocks I am going to be using to attach to my center block. And it will all make sense to you once we start putting it all together. So I have another Ohio Star, just one with the square and point in there. This one, which is a spinning or again with the two of the friendship stars together and um, another one there it really is down to you which stars you chose it really doesn't matter and um, this one as well and the last one was oh, sorry an ultimate one this a friendship star of chosen and um, another of this one as well okay so in total you need six of these and eight of your one and a half strip by 12 all right so do that get that all sorted we'll come back and we'll start putting the blocks out together Okay, so I have now cut all of my batting that I need. Okay, now I have cut my batting the length, the whole length of my center block with my added borders. All right, now I'm actually going to start sewing down the blocks and I'm going to start with my first sashing at the top. Okay, and I'm going to continue that throughout now all of the batting is here I have already given myself allowances for my borders I have my ruler there it is six inches I know the border the border we've calculated is seven so I've got a little bit of room to play with there okay so I'm going to start by sewing these two front sides together sew it along there and then continue with another sashing there and then another block in the end so we're going to do three rows now if you want you can give yourself a guideline in terms of where you want it to line up and so you can draw it there sorry draw a line so draw a line there so that you know it's nice and straight I don't really see the point to be honest but if you feel that you need to do that to keep you in line that's fine okay once I open this up and I stitch it is literally going to come up somewhere along there because obviously we're going to lose a quarter inch 
on it so again don't give yourself too much um batting because we are going to trim this away all right and the same as towards the end so i'm going to sew all of this on and i'm going to show you the first row and then what happens after that All right, so I've now sewn on all the three blocks and the four sashing. So I'm now going to take my center block here. All right, and I'm going to use the top border. All right, oh, I should say I'm going to use the longest side of the border. So obviously, remember, we did the top and bottom first, and then we decide so I'm going to use the longest side and I'm going to sew it front sides together onto here so it should match up nice and even okay and then I'm just going to stitch along there fold it over but when I fold it over what I'm going to do is spray base I'm just going to use some quilt some quilting spray and just spray base the batting and put this over well you're wondering why I'm doing that well this is a huge piece and rather than risk it raising I'm going to glue baste it down so that it stays when I'm quilting and then once I've done that then I'm going to do the other side of the actual um, rows but for the other side, I'm just going to make the whole row together and just sew the whole thing down. Okay guys, so now I've added on the centerpiece. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what I've done so far. So what I did was, as I said, just simply to sew the whole thing on to that seam there to join it up, okay? And I've just spray based it on so that it's nice and smooth and I just did uh, simply a very warm iron over it just to adhere it onto it because what I do find is when you spray it on the, the glue does get kind of cold and not so sticky but once you've added the heat to it it sticks on there quite easily all right um, you can if you want piece the center block onto there I just thought it would have been quicker and easier to do it as an individual block and then sew the whole thing so if you want you can sew this whole one on then add your piece border so you'll be a top and bottom I would sew on together and then add this whole piece there front sides together if you understand what I'm saying but it's up to you the choice is up to you all right but that is it there so what I'm going to do now is to simply um, add on the other side of this piece onto the other side and I'll show you what I mean by that all right so I went ahead and stitched this whole row together as I said so I've added on my sashing there at the end okay with my stars so after each star you have a sashing so you have one two three four so one at both ends and two in the middle okay that is simply just to sort of give the blocks a center stage so that you don't have the hassle of joining them together and trying to mash up any sort of points or anything like that so the sashing just allows each 
um, star block to shine individually so all I'm going to do now is to take this and flip it front sides together and simply just sew along there okay once I've done that I'm then going to just glue base again okay I'm going to spray baste it again and then use the iron to heat it and then I will then cut it off because then I know where I have my five sorry seven extra inches for my borders all right so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to pin as usual as you've seen me done I like to pin it just to make sure it doesn't move and um, once I've pinned it in place just do a normal stitch again I do a stitch length about three because of the batting so it moves quite easily I am still using my quarter inch feet nothing's changed about that all right the only time I change over my feet is when I go to actually do the quilting but everything else everything is pieced onto the batting using a quarter inch seam and that's important because even though we are joining it in this way it is still very important that you use our quarter inch seam because the pattern is written that way using that quarter inch seam okay so all right so I'm gonna finish that off now add it on together sew it on baste it and come back and show you the whole thing before I actually put the um, backing on or I may just put it back in on and show you the whole thing together guys I just wanted to show you how to fold and cut the second row to the first row now you've got two options you can just simply measure it which is what the first row is and just cut it off the second one but I've decided to take the lazy route and all I've done literally is to fold this in half fold the second row in half okay and I'm just going to simply cut along there all the way down and um, obviously it will be the same length or the same width in this case all right so that when I join it together all of the rows should be equated and match up nice and easily all right so that's just what I've done I haven't added the backing on as yet but I am going to cut the the backing off of the second row so I don't have all this bulk to take care of okay so I think that's it for now until I have actually added on the rest of it all right guys so this is what it looks should looks like with your three rows or your three stars in one row together here at the end and then the middle of course with the main star followed by the next three together okay so what I'm going to do now is to start quilting I'm going to start in the middle first and I'm probably just going to do some feathers around and then do some wavy lines coming towards the center of the star and at the corners here I'm just probably going to do swirls all right and here again on this area here I'm just going to do feathers again to border so that that border all the way around the center it's going to do feathers all the way around and then obviously quilt the stars individually on the side so once I've done with the quilting I will then show you what um, the joining is supposed to look like
all right guys so now that I've finished quilting all I'm going to do now is to trim off the edge that I intend to join so I'm folding back my backing tucking it underneath making sure it's wet out the way and I'm simply going to trim off my batting and put in the mesh the ruler and I'm simply just going to cut it and I'm going to do that all the way down and then I'm going to show you how I intend to join this together So as you can see the backing is still connected there so all I'm going to do is take the other piece put it together front sides together and sew along there and then I'm going to use the back two backs together one will be tucked under and one will be tucked over and then put a seam line there so I'm going to use the same color for the back and the same color for the top in terms of the threading so I'm going to finish doing that again tuck it under and just move it up so tuck it all the way under ensuring that you do not cut that backing fabric and you're simply just going to add your ruler and cut and take your time do bits at a time because look mine was still tucked there that's why I didn't cut all the way down there so just ensure before you cut it's nicely tucked under out of the way double check and double check and just keep trimming so doing small bits all the time so that you don't have a mishap if you want to use a ruler because I start sorry a scissors and just cut you can do that it is just quicker with the actual um, rotary cutter all right so tuck under line it all up and just cut but again you can use the scissors as well and I'm going to double check again and I can see there's nothing there just double check again and that's it all off and I still have my back intact all right so as I said I'm gonna go front sides together the other piece and I'm going to sew it so that it joins and so then I'll have a seam join like that and then the back will be hidden because I'm going to fold it over and then sew but all right guys so I went ahead now pinned it together as I said so I have the first row and the second row pinned together and I've literally pinned them together so that both of the my backing fabric is together there now when you are going to sew this please make sure you use a quarter inch seam so that you still use um, the right sort of stitching width all right so if you do it wider remember we are working with points so um, you, it's very likely as I said before you will obviously cut those points off okay so I have sewn a little bit already so I thought I'll update before I go any further so I've sewn along here already so what I would say though if you find that this piece is a little bit too big don't worry about it for now because we will trim it down a little bit because uh, as I said the idea is to fold it over but we don't want too much bulk folded over there to hide this raw edge here okay but continue with that make sure you pin it properly make sure you line up both edges and let me just show you here where my edges have already lined up I'm just show you here open this up properly so there you can see this is the top row and this is the bottom row I'll show you properly of course once I've done okay you can see my point is still intact there so use your quarter inch seam I am using my quarter inch feet for this and again I've put in my put my stitch on the longest so it's on four at the moment okay so nice long stitch so that it zips, zips through properly once we start to sew down the other side to cover the raw edge and um, we will probably tighten the stitch a little bit um, so that it's not so loose okay but you can make that decision depending on how tight that length that stitch length still is all right so I'm going to continue and then I'll show you exactly what to do once we've turned it over so far it looks pretty good okay it's joined really nicely all righty then
all right guys so as you can see now it is now joined together all right um, so what I'm going to do is to simply iron this now I'm going to iron the front as well as the back so that it lays lovely and flat and any puffiness has gone away so I'm just moving it down so you can see notice that the points are still intact nothing has been lost all right so I'm going to iron it now as I said and all I'm going to do basically is just just flatten it down like so I'm not gonna get too stressed about it to be honest because it is a quilt after all and you know it will relax as time goes on with use etc so just flatten it down and I'm only flattening it down so that um, I it's it's easier when I turn it on this side okay so as I usually do I open up the seams here again and just simply flatten it okay once we have done that I will then show you how I want to actually join this and I'm going to turn the whole thing over and then show you okay guys so let me show you now how to join now what I have done is simply to trim off any extra so I've kept it probably about an inch and a half okay hopefully you can see that because I know it kind of settles into the actual background so I'm folding it literally and I'm ironing it's already ironed so you can see the crease line there and then I'm going to fold it again up to the stitch line where it was there okay where it's in stitch before so I'm going to fold it again up to that stitch line and I'm going to bring it over because I want this fold here to be as small as possible so I fold it over to the stitch line it's going to finger press here so you can see what I'm talking about and I'm just going to fold it over really close to that line and I'm simply just going to sew all the way down just all the way down I'm going to use the same color so I've been using purple at the back so I'm going to use purple at the back here and I'm going to use obviously my background color at the front which is black okay so very very close to, so you're basically just making a folded hem basically you're folding that hem so it's lovely and tight onto that line and you're just covering it literally that is it and you just simply go all the way down and I'm going to iron this so that it stays so when I go I'm going to steam press it so that once I go on to the sewing machine it's already in place you can pin if you want but I don't think you need to pin to be honest because it's it's nice and flat as it is okay with the steam press and you just continue all the way down as you go and that's simply it so again put a little bit of heat and I'm just using my small iron to do this I'm not even using the bigger one you know so it's, it's and it's actually staying down hence the reason you don't need a pin so that's what I'm going to do and already you it looks seamless it looks like you've actually made it in a normal way all right so I'm gonna finish all of this and then I'll show you what it looks like I forgot to mention that whatever fabric you have here so that joint seam if you feel that it's too bulky just trim it nice and flat because as, as I said we are covering it as you know so you can take off some of that edging if you think it's a little bit too bulky I have trimmed mines a little bit um, so that I can fold it over and lovely and easily all right but I just forgot to mention that because I have trimmed and that's an integral part all right so two folds and then the third fold over to hide the seam Okay, so with sewing here, just take your time, very nice and slow, remove the pins as you go and just take your time and just slow and sew it very slowly. I mean, it's obviously it's not a rush, there's lots of bulk there. I am not using a um, walking foot, just my ordinary quarter inch seam. So just take, take your time and then do the whole thing. All right, guys, so I've joined it now. I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. So this is the first row we did together. All right, and this is the second one. So you can see where it's joined here 
on the front you still have all of your points there still as I've mentioned before everything is still intact all right so and um, just pay attention to that make sure you choose the, the thread the right way around so whatever fabric color for the thread you're using on the top make sure you do that so that you don't see it on the top all right let me show you what the back looks like um, before I do that let me just show you you've got to make sure that these edges here so those two must meet now it doesn't really matter if the, the background don't add it there because I know this is my size up here for my uh, measurement for my border I'm just going to trim, trim off the excess excess there all right but importantly make sure those points line up there um, on the back again on this side again make sure it lines up and I'll just pull this over so again I already have my border at the top there on the side all right on the back as you can see can't really see it there isn't it can't really see it there but it's there that line is there so you don't have to put an extra piece of fabric over it you use the same I hope you like this technique of joining it it's a lot more simplified for me um, and you know you don't have to buy extra fabric or anything like that it's just simply to fold it over but that is what it looks like so I go really close you can probably see it there but from a distance as you can't see anything it's literally just melted into the background but the front has come about really nicely nothing has been lost so just take your time and join it together so I hope this video has been helpful to you next week of course we're going to complete the last row and I'm going to show you the whole quilt as it is but I'm not going to show you the, what I've done as yet in terms of the quilting because you know these tutorials are literally all about joining the fabric or the, the two rows together just to ensure that um, you do it properly okay as you can see I've actually used two different threading and I'll explain that again um, next tutorial so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe give the video a thumbs up <laughs> and um, I shall see you next week so bye for now guys here I am hi <laughs> and um, thumbs up like uh, what else? I'm, I'm terrible at remembering the pro the uh, protocols. What I have to do? Do you, I have to remind myself so many times? Okay. So like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I want to know what you think about my technique of joining it together in this way. I think it's really fast and fun, and it's a bit trouble free to be honest. You don't have the big stress of doing it, having to you know cut an extra strip of fabric and simply join it again so it's really nice and easy and it looks fantastic all right guys so next lesson is the last one and again i'll show you the complete quilt i'll also will add the borders on there as well if you don't want to add the border by all means and um, once you've done your last row you can simply just trim off the batting if you haven't included it and um, simply just bind it and you're done and label if you want to all right so with that being said love you lots see you next tutorial bye for now and happy quilting